So you boot up Shogun 2 for the first time, and having read your history books, you know this is when guns arrived in Japan. You pick the Shimazu because everyone does. And you look at the tech tree and see, gunpowder mastery is way, way down there. But okay, you say, I'm going to starve all my peasants and leave my soldiers to fight with nothing but pointy sticks while your brightest minds are put to researching the ways of black powder. It's 1560. Half of your cities are near rebellion, and a bunch of angry factions are breathing down your neck for doing absolutely nothing. But at last, you got yourself a shiny new unit of... These men are great at range, and have a substantial effect on enemy morale. But they must be withdrawn before engaging in melee, or they will be oh, massacred. Oh, oh, oh. You sit upright, adjust your headset, and are excited to go into battle with these game-changing weapons. Okay, these units aren't going to win you any battles without some work, but they are some of the most rewarding units in the game. Matchlock infantry are far outranged by bows, require a direct line of sight, and are generally quite slow at reloading. To make matters worse, they are terrible in melee. Unless you have no self-respect and bring nothing but Portuguese tercios. So that presents the question. How do you protect your matchlock units while still giving them a line of fire? Back when this game was new, there were forums talking about how matchlock units were useless outside of a siege defense. Seeing what you can actually do with matchlocks in this game makes these painful to read. For all their weaknesses, guns offer two advantages. Bullets completely ignore armor, and they demoralize enemy units. All matchlock infantry can deploy bamboo walls during defensive field battles, preventing enemy units from charging them head-on and allowing them to keep firing at point-blank range. First in this category are matchlock ashigaru. Cheap and numerous, they can be recruited from any settlement once you have researched gunpowder mastery. Or you can recruit another variant of the unit from the Nanban trade port. Functionally, they are identical, and being Ashigaru, they have the worst accuracy and reload skill of matchlock units. But guns are guns, and low quality guns are far better than no guns. Firing projectiles that ignore armor, they are extremely effective at wearing down Naginata samurai, and especially devastating against small, elite hero units, whose numbers are too small for them to pose a threat to your musketeers. On the other end of the unit quality spectrum, the morale debuff from being under gunfire is especially devastating against Ashigaru units. A volley of bullets combined with a flanking or rear charge is often enough to break them in seconds. Losing your matchlock unit is typically devastating, and given how fragile Ashigaru are, engaging this unit in melee with anything is foolish. Matchlock samurai are better shots than Ashigaru. They are still quite bad in melee, and even with better armor, they should not be pitted against enemy archers. Their range is much shorter and they still cannot match the fire rate of bows. To better facilitate their role on the battlefield, matchlock samurai have access to rapid volley, an ability with a cooldown timer that briefly boosts their reload speed. Combined with their good accuracy, and when supported by melee infantry, they can quickly rout enemy units, and in a siege defense they can quite easily score over 500 kills. In an earlier video, I said I would largely ignore DLC units, but these two DLC matchlock units are so dominant in multiplayer that I couldn't leave them out. Exclusive to the Ikoiki clan are matchlock warrior monks. With very good accuracy and reload skill, they have the extended range ability, which briefly increases their range. Using this, they can engage with archers on more equal footing, or pick off high value targets like the enemy general. Given how valuable this unit is and its poor armor, they must be given proper protection from archers and melee units, especially cavalry. Best in class and arguably the best unit in the entire game is Portuguese Tercios. Not only does this unit have incredible accuracy and reload rate, along with the rapid volley ability, it boasts high armor and melee attack, making it the only matchlock unit that can fight well in melee. Nonetheless, guns are vital for demoralizing the enemy, so this unit should not be ordered into close combat unless necessary. The only drawback is that this unit is exclusive to the Otomo clan, and has relatively strict building requirements. 
At this point, you may have noticed I haven't even mentioned the Fire by Rank ability. On paper, this ability seems like something you would want to use whenever possible. But units in Fire by Rank take such a long time to open fire on approaching enemy units. And enemy cavalry will charge you before your men get a single shot off. Even worse, the firing drill is very unreliable when the unit is taking casualties, whether from arrows or bullets, meaning that effectively they end up with a slower kill rate. Personally, I almost never use the drill as I simply don't have the time to be constantly babysitting my guns with how busy a battle can get. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you would like to check out my live content, the link to my Twitch channel and my other social media channels will be included in the description below. Thank you and I'll see you all next time.